And in most churches, you ain't allowed to question Bishop. I tell the people, you can question me about what I'm preaching all you want. Question me. I welcome it. There aren't too many people that you can talk about on YouTube that it's not going to get a strong reaction from one side of the crowd or the other. It doesn't matter which way you view this person, whether you're for him or against him, especially if you're for him, you're going to see a lot of strong, in many cases, visceral reactions from people who are for Geno Jennings. Say anything, anything that sounds like any sort of critique, they're coming at you. Now, I first heard of Geno Jennings probably about a year ago. And when I first heard him, he was making a comment or it was about a statement of something that T.D. Jake said. And I'll cover that, that, that in a little bit. But what I heard, say, like, oh, yeah, this guy's on. And so, you know what YouTube does. It refers more uh, of his content to you or anyone making content about Geno Jennings. And so I got more. And as I became more familiar with him, I began to notice some things that were just really alarming. Now, let me say this up front. The Geno Jennings style is going to appeal to a lot of people. He does make a lot of good points on a lot of issues, particularly some of the issues that are social in nature and then kind of giving a biblical response to it, such as the way men and women dress. You have some first lady in churches, pastor wives. You look like this. You let your children look like this. You let many of the mothers in the church look like this. You go to so-called Christian concerts and the women look like this. The Bible says in like manner also, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is so modest about this? He was spot on in, in dealing with um, how women ought to, older women ought to train and give guidance to younger women. Yeah. How in the world can you teach young sisters how to be sober if you and old drunk? That's Amen. Right. You can't do that. Can't no, no. Listen. That they may teach when the young women. When you teach your young women how to be what? To be sober. How to be sober. You got a stable mind. That's right. Stable mind. Amen. When you see your mother not flirtatious, then she won't learn how to be flirtatious. That's Amen. Right. When you see when your when your mother see that the daughter is flirtatious and the mother put her in you got a good mother, she'll put you in check. That's, That's right. right. Amen. That's right. Is that right? Amen. Amen. You know, the mothers in the old time, the boys was allowed to just come in and out of your house. And as I said, even when he was dealing with T.D. Jakes and, and his response to an interview, yeah, he was spot on there. He asks Jakes a question. Can homosexuality, in fact, the interview is on YouTube. Can homosexuality and the church coexist? Jakes didn't stutter. He said, why, well, certainly. Then Jake said, there's many ways. There's a whole lot of ways to get to God. You's a liar. I even saw an interview that he did at some radio station. And the way they were kind of going at him, they were wrong. And Gino was right. Gino comported himself in a, in a mature manner, respectable manner. Uh, he didn't attack them, but he made his point as to why he's saying such things. And so there are some things that I can go along with Gino on these things. However, there are some things that I don't agree with, and I need to say some. Now, I really do believe, I really do believe that Gino Jennings is sincere. I believe, I, I, I believe that he, he believes what he's saying is true. There are some things that you might question that I have questioned as to whether he legitimately believes uh, are of God, but... For the most part, I think that he is a sincere person. He is, without question, bold in his speech. Now, does that mean that he is actually a Christian? Well, we'll discuss that as we go. Because remember, and I'm not saying this right now, but being bold or being sincere does not necessarily mean that you're a Christian. There are a lot of people who were sincere, but were sincerely wrong and were not Christian. Are the suicide bombers of the Taliban, are they sincere? Sure, they mean what they, they really mean what they say. So that doesn't mean anything. It's just your doctrine that has to line up, that has to comport with scriptures for us to see if a person actually really is a Christian or not. I've said in the past that if you want to know if you're a leader, 
then what do you do? Look back. If you don't see anyone following, then you're not a leader. The same holds true when you want to see what kind of a leader you are. Look back. See what kind of people are following you. I say that because when you, you look at the people that follow Geno Jennings, you get a clear indication of who Geno Jennings is himself. And I don't mean a random, you know, one or two or three different followers who don't behave a certain way. No, a lot of times they mimic who the person is that they're following. You'll see a lot of name calling and insults that are hurled around. And they really mean that the, the vitriol that comes from these so-called, these professing believers doesn't really sound all that godly oftentimes. These people tend to be kind of loud, rude, as I said, insulting. And I'm just going to be honest, sometimes a bit uneducated. Not that you have to be educated to understand the scriptures or to be a Christian. No, but some of the things that you say is like, wait a second, that didn't even make sense. That wasn't even one, a mature statement. To give you an example, let me just show you some of the uh, comments that I have received from a lot of his followers on a video that I did basically saying, no, Gino, you are not an apostle. These comments are, there's nothing godly about it, but those are the ones that you really don't have too much of an issue with because people are going to say and do childish and silly things. The ones that are the more disheartening are the ones that seem to elevate Gino to a status that is not reserved for a common man. Not just to the status of an apostle, but something even more special than an apostle, almost on the lines of deity himself. I know they don't think that he's deity, but the way that they reverence him, that's only reserved for God, right? And as you see, they like that tough talk, that bravado. They like to give it. Only problem is oftentimes they don't like to receive it. But me, listen, I don't mind giving it the way you like to receive it. So with that being said, let's get to it. When you watch Geno Jennings and you look at his church services at the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ, I think that's what it's called, and even the YouTube channel, one of the first things that stick out is kind of the control that he has, not just over the men in the pulpit with him, but also the control that he has in the audience. You'll notice that he has the women separated from the men for the most part. You'll notice how the women are dressed. They cannot come there without having their head literally covered in some sort of hat or scarf or, or some sort of cloth covering. He takes this verse really seriously, really literally. It's almost a nation of Islam-esque type of approach that he has. That's where, the, if, if you're wondering where you've seen this before, well, look no further than Louis Farrakhan. Am I saying he's a Muslim? Am I saying that he's an admirer? Maybe in his style, but he's not promoting Islam or the nation of Islam. That's not what I'm saying, but just his style. Even to the point to where his Bible, someone pointed this out, that his Bible even looks like like a Quran. It's designed in the way that a Quran is. Again, that's just some things. That just, you just notice those things. Plus the fact, not just the separation of the men and the women, but the guys that you have on stage, the I don't know, you know, not that it's a wrong, it's a, it's a bad thing or it's a sin, but it's just, it just sticks out the man that you have beside you always as almost like a hype man, not just reading scripture, but he just kind of, he preaches along with Gino. I'm not sure what, what, the, what the gentleman's name is, but it sticks out. Not a big issue though. It's not an issue where you say, you know what? I can't listen to him because of that, that, that he's ungodly because of that. Is there a scripture that says you shouldn't separate the men and the women? No. Uh, but you would think that you would have the husbands and the wives there together sitting beside each other. Something else I'm going to point out about the men and the women that happens, that seems to happen in worship with one group versus the other, that just really odd. And his style, like I said, is, is, is a little, little different, but I could let all of that go. It wouldn't bother me too much. Okay. That's just, that's his personal style. A lot of preachers, a lot of pastors have their own personal style. I could let that go. What I can't let go is the doctrine. Gino Jennings, obviously, he has he's a, a oneness Pentecostal apostolic. He does not believe, and we'll cover these, all these, he does not believe that you are saved eternally, that your salvation is secure. In other words, he does not believe in one saved, always saved, or eternal security. He believes that you can lose your salvation. 
And we've gone over this a bunch of times in different passages, but it's clear, one, what God says is that uh, he is going to sprinkle our hearts clean. Uh, he's going to make our hearts clean as he sprinkles water and pours his spirit into our heart. And then he is going to, he, God, is going to cause us to walk in his statutes, and we will never depart from them. That's clear. Jesus tells us in John 15 that we must abide and we must bear fruit. That's true. You have to abide. There's no such thing as abiding for a minute and then leaving and still having salvation. No, you must remain. You must ab abide. You must continue. But then he goes on to say later on in John 15 that he has ordained us or appointed us or placed us to continue and that our fruit should remain. Now, I'll come back to the Greek portion I just mentioned a little later about something that I think is really troubling and, con and, and concerning about Gino. But let me be clear, if all he did was believe that you can lose your salvation, alarms wouldn't go off still. I think that's a bad teaching to teach that you can lose your salvation. I think that teaches that uh, there is no real faith and trust in what Christ did. But many people who love the Lord, I think who love the Lord, um, hold to that or people who struggle with this thing uh, as to whether you can lose your salvation. There are many folks who struggle with that. And so I wouldn't put him in the category of heretic or a false teacher or anything like that because of that. But there are other issues that are troubling. Most notably that the, the first thing that, that sticks out is the fact that you call yourself, he calls himself an apostle. Well, and I've covered this before and I don't think people are getting this. One, to be an apostle, that is a foundational office, meaning the foundation was laid. The church is built off of these apostles, meaning someone had to send you to make you a, an apostle of the church, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Well, who sent these apostles? Jesus. Geno Jennings is not an apostle of Jesus. Now, in a, in a basic sense, anybody can be an apostle. Anybody can send someone, but not just anyone can claim to have been sent by Jesus. Because the next question is, who were you sent to? Je Jesus sent out his 12 apostles to, to the Jews. And so this is how the church is built based off of them and them putting out the gospel and then also training others to learn and to teach the gospel to others. But these are the foundations to which Jesus Christ is the, is the chief cornerstone. And so what does Paul tell us in 1 Corinthians 3? He says, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul also says in Ephesians 2.20, he says, um, about this household of God, it is built on the foundation of, and he gives a chronology, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, or some versions may say the chief cornerstone. And so the first thing he does is building his churches off of these apostles, the first to receive the Holy Spirit, the apostles. Then after that, then they begin to give authority or lay hands on people so that it is clear that not just they, but also these other Jews have the Holy Spirit, which is the, which is the identifying mark of a believer is to have the Holy Spirit. Then they also lay hands on who? The Samaritans. Remember, he gives a chronology uh, to them in, in Acts 1.8 that you should be my witnesses first to Jerusalem and Judea, the Jews, and then Samaria, the Samaritans, and then to the rest of the world. And then they also go and lay hands on the Gentiles. And so that way everyone can see, one, hear the gospel being preached in different languages, but then also they can see as a sign to the church, the Jewish church, that, or the Jews in the church, that these also, not just they alone, they also have received the Holy Spirit. And so it's clear that to be a believer, you, you, you will have the Holy Spirit, and they see that now in the beginning of the church. And so they start off with these apostles uh, and prophets. Also, this is Jesus to which and to which Jesus is the chief cornerstone and so there is no other foundation that can be laid and so if a person asks themselves can I actually can I legitimately be a, an apostle like them the answer has to be no because you cannot lay a new foundation if you do you in order to lay a new foundation it would be a different foundation and to do so there's going to be literally hell to pay if you do so in an errant fashion amen now, some people are going to argue, how can you say that Gino wasn't sent by God? How can you say that God didn't send Gino? Well, my question is, how can you say that God didn't send me to tell Gino that he wasn't sent by God? I mean, that it, it's a silly argument. All we have is the, is the scriptures. Two believers can disagree. And my opinion is no more valid than yours, and yours is no more valid than mine. But if we disagree, then what is going to be the final authority on settling this dispute? 
It's got to be the scriptures. And so I can't be emotional and say, well, uh, the Lord sent me to do this, but it doesn't comport with scriptures and then say, well, who are you to tell me or, or one of my followers to say, who are you to say that this man wasn't sent by God? Well, the scriptures. He was not sent likened unto that. Now, in the sense that we all were sent to spread the gospel. OK, fine. And so if we all are sent that way and if we all are these generic apostles, so to speak, then what benefit is it of you to call yourself an apostle? But let's be clear. He makes himself out to be a special type of an apostle. One of the things that you'll notice about Gino is he does kind of brag about himself. He does kind of lift himself up as though he is well, somebody special. I know they have never heard nothing like this. I get thousands of letters with that quote. Pastor Jennings, I've never heard nothing like it. One man wrote me in his 80s. He said, I've been living 83 years. I've never heard a man like you. That's right. This is the only program that's over the air to lead you to God the right way. Yes. Greater work than these shall he do. Because I Yes, I did more work than the Son of God. Right. And I thank God that now I'm here. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and you, some don't like the idea like that. that I'm here, but God sent us. That's, that's right. right. He sent us and gave us a divine skill. That's right. Just like he given the apostle Paul. That's it. Amen. Luke 11 and that verse 49. What justifies my arrival? Oh, you want to know how I became one? God Amen. appeared unto me. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. God did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said God Almighty Amen. appeared unto me. Amen. And spoke to me like he did, Brother Paul. Yeah. How is it that I'm able to go into the scriptures and strip them down? That's right. As using fractions, break them down to the lowest common denominator. That's right. right. Wonderful. My divine skill was godly given. But you question me about this God of heaven. That's right. Question me about his law. Amen. Pick up any subject you want to talk about in the Bible. That's right. And say if the God of heaven don't drop me in it, take it apart, split the atom, and show you the nucleus of it. That's right. Wonderful. That's right. Yes, sir. My skill God is God-given. I got it. I got it from God. That's right. That's right, sir. Only God himself can instill such boldness within a person. Just as concerning is Gino's lack of a belief in the Trinity or what is clear, his oneness view, this modalism that he has observed. It's kind of hard to kind of pin him down on exactly what he believes. And so let's just be clear. If you do not believe that Jesus is God, you don't believe in who Jesus is, which means it's hard to believe that you are actually a believer because you are denying his actual identity. Is it required that you believe that he is God in order to be saved? Before we even look at that, let's just look and see, is he God? We know Acts 1.8, God calls Jesus God. That ought to settle it. If God himself calls him God, well, then he is God. And we see that uh, God has shown up in the flesh in the past. Uh, the term is given to him angel, which doesn't mean that he's an angel like, the, like his angels of heaven, like Gabriel or Mark. No, in a sense, he's a messenger. It's just, just a title to give him. But we know that he's not any old messenger. He's not any old angel. Because in Genesis, when he speaks to Hagar, when he speaks to Balaam, when he speaks to uh, Joshua, when he speaks to Gideon, when he speaks to Jacob, He's called God. He is identified as God. This is God who's speaking to us. So we see God take on flesh. And, and we see in the fire in Exodus 3 that God is speaking through this burning bush. And so God takes on not flesh in the, at this moment, but takes on fire. And so if he can wrap himself in fire, he can certainly wrap himself in flesh. He can come in a veiled glory just to be in our presence. And so in Exodus 3, notice the terms that, that, are giving, that are given to God. He's called the Lord, the angel of the Lord, and God. That's clear. But then he also says, when Moses says, who shall I say sent me? What does he say? I am. Remember that. We're going to cover that in just a second. But in John 1, 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And so what you'll notice in John 1, it says that Antarctica and Halagos, which is your English bears this out just the way it's written. In the beginning was the word. 
Kaihalagas ain prostantheon, which is, and the word was pros with God. That's exactly how your English says it. And so let's see what else it says. Kaifeas ain halagas. That's if we were just to write it in word order in English, it would say, and God was the word. But your English version says, and the word was God. Why is that? Well, the reason why it's it's written differently and the reason why our English has the two flip-flop in the third portion is for this reason. The one thing that we have to identify is what is the subject and what is the predicate nominative? Because in this case, we have two nouns, lagos, word, and theos, God. So which one is the subject? In this case, it's not theos, it's not God is the subject. Lagos is the subject. So what is theos? Theos is what's called the predicate nominative. And in Greek, the rules of grammar state that the predicate nominative describes what the subject is or what is classified as or under. So in this case, the word is classified as God. The word is God, which is why we say in English, our English translations say the word um, was God, was with God and the word was God. <clears throat> and so if the word was God, did, did the word remain God? Well, surely no one says that is that the word used to be God, but it stopped being God. So it's clear that the word is God. And then we obviously read further in John and find out that this word is none other than Jesus. And so it's important to know that Jesus is God. It's important to understand the deity of Christ in order to be saved. Well, we know, as we as we found out in Exodus, that that God is also called the I am. And you've heard it spoken of over and over again about how Jesus is the I am. We know that the I am um, is taken as 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 deity. We know that the son of man and son of God is also to be taken as God. When you say that, you're saying I'm God. How do we know? Because the Jews accuse Jesus because he says, says those things that you are being a mere man are calling yourself God. And Jesus didn't deny that because he is God. And so is it important? Is it necessary? Well, let's look at what John says in chapter 8, verse 24. He says, I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am, he will die in your sins. So unless you believe that I am, well, I am what? Well, that's where the Greek comes in as well. Look over here. It says that... <clears throat> In gar me, which is for, this is post positive. So for uh, in me, which is unless, unless pistusete hate, which is believe that ego me. There it is, the word ego me, which is I am. And so he's saying that unless you believe that I am God, he says, um, you will die in your sins. So that part is clear. Unless you believe that he's the I am, that he is God. He says, you will die in your sins. Do I think that a person needs to believe and understand all that there is that could be understood about this triune existence, what we call the Trinity? Do I believe they need to understand that fully to become a believer? No, because who does? <laughs> You've got scholars that wrestle with how to make this fit. It's hard to explain who he is because he's God. He's not like anything that we've seen. And we know he's God because what is he doing in John 17? He's praying. Yeah, he's praying to the Father because he's in a veiled form. Do not misunderstand his existence on earth in his earthly ministry as meaning that he is less than God and not God. He, he came in a veiled form, in a form lower than angels. But he prays and says, Father, give me back the glory that I had with you in the beginning. We already know that God does not share his glory. And this glory that Jesus is, is, is wanting back, he's wanting back because he had it when? in the beginning. On top of those things that are also concerning is his belief in one, water baptism, two, it has to be done verbally in the verbal name of Jesus, and then three, there must be this evidence of speaking in tongues. One thing that Gino doesn't understand is what it means to be in the name of. Jesus would not give them a charge to go and baptize in my name and then have and then have them do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that if they didn't mean the same thing, then that would be a clear violation of what Jesus told them to do. And so do we have the apostles operating in error? No. Because what Gino has not has failed to realize is that it's the same thing. And he doesn't mean to say this verbatim to give this verbal command, this verbal statement over someone being baptized, that is not what he's saying. 
the word or the term in my name or in the name of doesn't mean that I have to say in the name of this or that. Verbally, it means based on or on the authority of. So on the authority of what Christ has done, because the word anoma, which is which is what, what's used here, you'll see this phrase uh, into onomati or in onomati two different variations. But um, based on his name, where well, the word onoma is the is the word for name or reputation or what a person has done or is doing. And so based on the authority, the name, the reputation of Jesus, which is the same as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then it means the same thing. It's not like Jesus did something, the Holy Spirit did something, and the Father did something. They all did something separate. No, it's what Jesus said to do. And then secondly, just as important, is he's not talking about a physical baptism. That's not what's in play here. Remember, we are all going to be baptized into the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us so in 2 Corinthians 12, verses 13. And so every believer has been baptized into the body. Every believer, whether, whether they've been a believer um, for one day, for one minute, for one hour, for one week, one year, one decade, we all have the Holy Spirit. We've all been baptized into that body or made a drink of that spirit, all of us. But then this issue of tongues, that's the part that's just as troubles. To make it as though these people have to speak in these languages, although he takes it as an ecstatic, almost gibberish babbling that is not biblical because the word uh, for, for tongues is the word for languages, and it always means a known language, unless it's talking about the actual tongue in your mouth. And so we've got many verses that demonstrate that being a believer, being saved, did not come with them speaking in tongues. The Ethiopian eunuch, he didn't speak in tongues that we know of. Even in Acts 2, verses 40 through 47, we don't see that all the believers actually spoke in these languages. In Acts 13, 12, the proconsul, he didn't speak in tongues. Acts 13, 48, they believed, but did they speak in tongues? We know they received the Holy Spirit, but they didn't speak in tongues. Acts 16, 15, Lydia and her household. What about the jailer and his household? They didn't speak in tongues either. Did Paul speak in tongues? I mean the tongues that you think of, the the one that no one knows. We know he spoke in languages because he says that in 1 Corinthians 14. We know he's an educated man, so we know he speaks in these different languages. But did he speak in languages? I'm not saying he did or didn't, but the point is this very same Paul also asked a question, and the way it's phrased is that the obvious answer is no. Do all speak in tongues? Are all apostles or all prophets? No. Do all speak in tongues? Do all have this gift or that gift? No. And so even Gino's understanding of tongues is off. One of the things, and I, I, I mentioned this early, but one of the things that probably should have caught your attention, maybe, I know it caught mine and it caught my wife's attention, was, did you notice who was speaking in tongues? Who was catching the Holy Ghost? Did you notice who didn't catch the Holy Ghost? Who, who was not speaking in tongues? The women. And I don't know if that's some sort of rule. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing out loud. But is that some sort of rule where the men catching the women? I've never been to a Pentecostal church, a charismatic church, where the women sat still while the men caught the Holy Spirit. I've, I've never. As a matter of fact, you're almost always going to see a woman so-called catch it before the men, or definitely you'll see more of them. But in this case, I'm just wondering. That may speak to the level of control that he has over the services and how he demands service to be done and that maybe he does require the women to keep silent, literally keep silent. And that's not saying that I support women leading men in service. No, 
but they can't utter a word. See, one of the hallmarks of a mature believer and certainly of someone who's leading a body, it's got to be maturity, not just in the word. That's a given. You must be mature in the word, but also in just the way you comport yourself, the way you act. And so to let loose and have this uncontrollable outburst in so-called in the spirit, I think that's unbiblical. But also laying that aside, even when he has debated people how he's just really lost control, he has this he has this almost childish bullying behavior. Oh, no, 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 we're yes. going to stay with the subject. We're going to stay with one thing at a time. You won't let me get nothing across. How many did Jesus preach? Answer my question. You better not grunt nothing else. How many did Jesus preach? Jesus. Oh, 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 did Jesus oh, oh, oh. preach six or did he preach ten? Hold on, I dare hold, you to tell me he said hold, ten. Hold, 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 hold. I'm not a horse. Don't tell me to hold. Jesus. Never mind your microphone. Can, can I speak? Get your chapter. Can I speak? Talk Bible. Can I speak? Talk Bible. Can I speak? Talk Bible. Can I speak? Call your chapter. Can I speak? Prove that women is older than the word and women can wear makeup. Back up the two lies that's on the floor. Can't, I need time to speak. Speak that. We've been wasting time. Come on, Pastor. Vegas. Ba we don't want your lying mouth. I know your style. You said that I the know woman your style. is older I know your style. than the word. You either debate Pastor Jennings or sit down. Hold on. Be a Hold man. on. Hold on. Be a man. Hold on. Hold on, man. hold on, Is so you, you, Jennings okay, or sit down. you as the pastor, you need to control Either your you seat, debate pastor you need Jennings to control your like seat, like a man, let me speak, now sit down, let me speak, debate pastor let me Jennings speak. like a man, let me speak, or sit down, let me speak, debate pastor let me Jennings speak. like a real man, let me know, let me know when you finish, sit down, let me know when you finish, if you, you don't, told a lie. if you don't allow me to speak, you told a lie, I want to speak, I want to I want to speak, I don't want your mouth, no, now what I want to say is, your mouth. what I want to say is, if I, want I can, Bible. you got I it. want Bible, sir. You're leading. I want Bible. You are leading sheep. I want Bible. You're leading sheep. I want Bible. Do you feel the bite? No. <laughs> we like to finish the text. Brother Smith. We like to finish the text, sir. Just can a we, minute. Can we finish the text? So much so that he will not let you finish um, or say what you want to say unless you say it the way he does it. Which brings me to this. People have stated before, and I listen, I've done this. I've offered requests, has not been accepted, and so I'm good with that. As a matter of fact, I doubt he would. But I people have said, why don't you debate him? Be a man and go debate him, which is them with that, that whole bravado. Be a man and go debate him. Well, tell him to be a man and, and accept my debate. But he won't, which is fine. I don't think that, that, that him not accepting my debate is not being a man. Now, one, I would never be so silly as to debate him on his home turf in his church with his own personal moderator there. That would never happen. It would be something where it's just he and I alone having our own Bible. We're reading it ourselves and having a discussion with the word. But he's already stated that he would not debate someone like me. He wants someone, as he, as he says, a whale. You know, I don't debate everybody. And the reason why I don't debate everybody, a lot of these men don't want to be right. They just want to make a name for themselves off the popularity of the platform of the truth of God. And a lot of them is mad because we won't let them use our platform. So I'm, I'm just not interested in everybody. I don't want little tadpoles, and, you know, little microcosmic things in water that you can't even see. I want whales so I can harpoon them. Them that's affecting the masses of people. Are you getting what I'm telling you? I want kings and queens and big false prophets so I can scale you. Hey Amen, you little pulpit parasites. Need a magnifying glass to just see your level of falseness. I ain't saying well, that about you. My question is when I go and look at the different debates that he's had, first of all, you've never debated a whale yourself. You want to debate a whale. Uh, I get you think that someone wants to make their name 
off of you. Okay, fine. But are you now also wanting to make your name off of somebody that's bigger than you? More folks know T.D. Jakes than, than they know you. More folks know Creflo Dollar than they know you. But okay, fine. You want to, you wanna, as you say, harpoon the big whales. But again, you never debated one of those in the first place. And then that caused us to look at who have you debated? Geno's only debated people who are suspect in the word to begin with. You debate a Rastafarian, a Rastafarian rapper. You debate a person who is gay and who wants to defend homosexuality, trying to use the Bible. You debate a, a Hebrew Israelite. You debate people in the nation of Islam. You, you debate other Muslims. Uh, you debate a novice in the Bible who even says that he's just learning this thing, trying to get his feet wet. Well, where's the, the debate that you've had with someone who was clearly strong in the Bible, whether you disagree with them or not? Where is that debate at? See, what we can't do is allow a person to say that, that um, uh, I am this and I am that, but I can't be touched. I can't be touched or approached by anyone that no one can call him out. Now, this is what he says. You can't come face the truth of God with Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The only thing work here is Bible. Amen. Bible work here. Your Hebrew, Greek, and Latin is good. But brother, it don't help you here. But see, the problem is, Gino, it is an issue when you don't know the language. When you tell a person that Hebrew, Greek, and I don't know why you said Latin, it's not a lot, Latin's not in the Bible. Uh, but when you make these statements, no, uh, only Bible. Well, your Bible is Bible because of Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. So you don't have it without that. And it would make sense, I believe, that a pastor, especially one at your level, should have some familiarity with Hebrew and Greek. You just should. That way, some of these mistakes that you make, you wouldn't make these mistakes. Paul okay. did not write the book of Romans. Let me show you who wrote it. Romans chapter 16 and verse 22. Bottom it. I, Tertullius. I, Tertullius. Who wrote this epistle. Who wrote this epistle. Salute you in the Lord. Salute you in the Lord. No, Paul did not write the book of Romans. The one that wrote the book of Romans was a man named Tertullius. So anyone can tell you that, yeah, that's not a big deal in terms of Paul not physically pinning uh, Romans or other epistles. That was custom in many cases for someone else to do so, maybe because a person has poor eyesight or their hands or what have you. But you would have uh, their own personal scribes who would write for them on their behalf. But still, you would attribute that to Paul or anyone else doing that same thing as them writing it when a person writes a book. <clears throat> Oftentimes, there's something or someone else that's actually pinning it, pinning it for them. It may be that you're typing it. Okay, fine. But it, now what happens is it goes to the editor. The editor kind of makes some changes, some, some, some grammatical issues are there. But you're still known as the writer. These are still your words. And so to make this statement, okay, fine. I won't harp too much on that, but it just goes to show that you should know better than, than, than make this as a point. And that's where the benefit of actually being trained comes in. Because if you start off, you got a lot of energy, a lot of emotion, a lot of zeal, and you got a Bible. And just because you've been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years, that means you've been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years the right way. And so now you get entrenched in what you've been doing because you've seen some results. You tout the number of baptisms, the number of folks that come to the church and folks that are listening. Well, is that really an indicator? Is that really a true indicator of legitimate fruits? Because if that's the case, then so too can people in the Mormon church tout that, the Jehovah's Witness. Certainly the nation of Islam or, or Muslims in general, that's not a really a key indicator. It's really how you govern yourself with the scriptures and how you understand and use the scriptures. So the question is, is Geno Jennings an actual Christian? I would say it's hard to believe so based on his doctrinal issues, how he handles his belief in Jesus as being God. <clears throat> now it could be that he may believe that he is God and so forth, but he has a kind of off understanding of the Trinity or of uh, Jesus. He's made the statement that he thinks that we believe in three gods. I don't know who believes in three gods. No Christian, no person that believes in the Trinity believes in the three gods, which is also um, speaks to his level of understanding when it comes to these issues. To, to not intentionally misrepresent the, 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 the belief, but to 
unknowingly misrepresented because you just don't know what these people believe after all. And so what's going to happen after this? Well, his, his defenders are going to attack me. Uh, I don't know the Lord. I'm this, I'm that name calling like it's always been done. I get that. This wasn't necessarily directed at you to begin with those who are going to respond that way. But to those who are just wondering, those who are looking, because most people don't go to his church. Most people don't watch him a lot. Some do. And so those who are looking at him thinking that that might be acceptable because he's given some good, valid points on some of these social issues concerning homosexuality and transgender and men and women and so forth. Well, even um, atheists have some of these views. Even people who are Muslims, uh, Hebrew Israelites and, and Nation of Islam and, and all these other groups, they have these same views. So that doesn't mean anything. It's the scriptures. And so for you who are looking to grow and to understand the scriptures better, you're the one who I'm talking to. Now, the person's going to come and com comment with uh, some vile responses. That's fine. You are free to do so. You are more than free to do so. It's going to it's going to demonstrate the actual spirit that's in you. When you comment in an ungodly fashion, don't say that that's God that caused you to do that. Don't say that. And all you're doing is you're mimicking the person where you got it from. Geno Jennings. And so for the Geno Jennings, if he were to hear this, if he were to say that um, all his doctrine is correct, that it's right, and that he is a true apostle, well, Gino, you's a liar! <laughs>